Hi, I'm Laurel, founder of Laurel's Originals, and I had promised to tell a story about how I started my hand-painted canvas dress business in, uh, in Cahuita. Uh, Cahuita is on the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica, and I arrived to Costa Rica in 1977. I was traveling by myself with a backpack, uh, got on a bus in Tijuana, Mexico, and I was actually on my way to Peru. And I took a stop off in La Libertad in El Salvador to go visit some friends because I had lived there before with my surfer boyfriend. And when I got back on the Tica bus, which is the bus line that runs to Costa Rica, I met a young American woman who is traveling also by herself from Texas. And she asked me if I wanted to go with her to Cahuita in Costa Rica. And so I, uh, I said, sure, why not? And that's the beauty of traveling by yourself. You get to go with the flow and uh, end up where you never thought you would end up. Anyway, I did go to Cahuita. And uh, after I'd lived there for, I met Todd, who was uh, my boyfriend. Uh, he was already living there and he later became my husband and the father of my children. We were business partners um, exporting uh, ornamental plants. And I had gone to visit a girlfriend after a couple of years of living in Costa Rica. And I went back to San Diego. I'd gone to La Jolla High School and she was a friend of mine from high school. And she was doing a business, uh, hand painted uh, dresses. And uh, so I thought that that sounded like a lot of fun. We didn't have a lot to do in Cahuita besides working and surfing. There was uh, no television. We didn't have cell phones or computers even. We didn't, you know, this was back in the late 70s. So um, I bought some t-shirts, I bought some paint, and I, uh, I always tell the story about how I was in the paint store, and I called her up in a panic because they had five different kinds of black, and I didn't know what color black to get, and I only thought there was one color black, and she said, calm down, just get a tube of Mars black, and so I got some uh, tubes of acrylic paints and some t-shirts, and, uh, and I took them home to Costa Rica, and it after I, I was painting some just as a hobby, uh, you know, with the things that that surrounded me where I live, you know, we had a, a toucans that lived in a mango tree outside of our window in the jungle. Uh, we lived on, uh, in the jungle on the beach on the Caribbean coast. Uh, I would go snorkeling and there was beautiful fish and coral and plants and the uh, uh, around the live coral reefs and Cahuita and just all the beautiful flowers and birds, hummingbirds, uh, um, hibiscus flowers, the orchids, um, a lot of exotic, beautiful exotic flowers. So I was painting those on t-shirts and uh, at that time there was a small store in Cahuita and they asked me if I would paint them some t-shirts. Um, the S Easter week was coming up and the most tourism that Costa Rica experienced in those days was from Costa Ricans who would go to the beach for Easter week and they would all flock to the beach and so the store wanted some something to, to sell to them as, as a souvenir and um, as Costa Rica developed uh, more and more people like me in their 20s were coming to Costa Rica and, and wanted to stay here and were thinking of ways of how they could make a business. And uh, that's how, you know, the zip lines went up and the water rafting, uh, the fishing. Uh, there was never any sport fishing in Costa Rica until, you know, the Americans came and said, you know, we love to fish and this is a beautiful town and so let's fish here. And and meanwhile, little uh, as the tourists started coming and to be attracted to these events that were being developed, little shops would come up. But there wasn't, although there's many indigenous tribes who do make beautiful art, there's not a big textile community here in Costa Rica. It's mostly uh, just different types of art, but it wasn't developed because there was no tourism at the time. So the shops were looking around for things to buy, and I would sell to my friends in different towns. Towns, Tamarindo, Flamingo, Hako, uh, little stores that were popping up and uh, doing my hand painted dresses. So it got to be a bit for me. I started out with um, 
hand with t-shirts that were already made from jc pennies they were extra large tall t-shirts which looked like a beach dress and i would cut the neckline embroidered it and we rolled up the sleeves and embroidered that and then i hand painted the design with a sharpie pen and then i i hand drew it i hand painted it had to iron it to set the paint so it was very labor intensive so as more and more of my friends wanted more dresses uh, and beach covers then I uh, I found somebody in Kawita to help me and I found somebody to help me with the embroidery because that was very time timely and then I needed some help with the painting and at the time I was hand drawing every single t-shirt and uh, a friend of mine um, actually my friend that was painting the t-shirt she went into business with her sister and her sister told me that about this idea of taking this um like not wax paper but it was a, a heavy sheer paper stronger than a tracing paper but drawing the design putting it inside the dress and we built a light box that was made out of wood with fluorescent lights and glass on top and we could trace the design so i didn't have to recreate every single design i could make one pattern for flowers or for fishes or for the toucan or the macaw and then somebody else could trace those designs onto the dresses and they were still all hand embroidered and hand painted and eventually um, i made a little studio on the back porch of my house and then um, my friend, again, that was had started me out with the, my hand-painted dresses, she said, we're now buying material in bulk from the company that sells the material to JCPenney so you can make your own dresses. And this opened up a whole new world for me because now I could make long dresses and short dresses and extra large dresses and smaller dresses. And of course, eventually when I had children, then I started making children's clothes. So now I needed a seamstress. I got myself a sewing machine. I started painting the, you know, sewing the dresses, but I eventually uh, taught somebody else how to sew them. And uh, then uh, we built a, an art studio in uh, our little workshop in the packing house because we had a packing house where we were packing the ornamental plants for export and uh, I had as many as eight women working at a time and they would you know come walking through the jungle or you know taking a bus or however they had to get to my house from where they lived uh, to to work and we were all in our 20s but you know they were getting married and and having children and their husbands didn't want them to leave the home after a while they the first person who came to me was a seamstress and she said my husband wants me at home when he comes home from work he wants me there to have his home cooked you know his hot lunch ready for him and and now uh he doesn't want me working while i'm pregnant and uh and then when i have children i'm not going to be able to work anyway and i said no you can work uh here you can take the sewing machine home and you will work from home and by then I had my electric shears and I was I could um, cut dresses in bulk and I was cutting out the dresses and I said I will bring you the dresses and when you sew the dresses I will pay you for the contracts and we created contract work and I ended up making a contract for the embroidery and I ended up making a contract for the woman who was painting and I actually knew her husband. She was painting on this little table in the back porch. And, you know, we it was a trop, lowland tropical rainforest. We get some torrential rains back there. So she couldn't always work. And I went to him and I said, you're pretty happy having a little extra income coming in the family. And it's nice when your wife's working. And, you know, now she's working at home. But don't you think she deserves a nice place to work? And he said, well, yeah, I guess. And I said, well, I tell you what, I'll buy the materials and you you're the builder you build her a little works area you know put a roof over that porch and make some nice tables and make some storage for the paints and you know let's let's make her a nice area so she can paint and so he did that and uh so we had a great team and eventually when i moved to san jose um i ended up cutting the material at in in my art studio in san jose and i would ship it on the bus and i could these women for many years after 
I would ship the dresses down cut and one woman would, would sew, one would uh, trace the designs on and embroider the dress and the other one would, um, she would paint all of the, the designs and uh, iron and then they'd tag them and they would bag them and it was great. We kept working together for many years until I moved on to doing hand-painted canvas bags and hand-painted um, canvas rugs. So um, that wasn't something that I thought would happen when I moved to, uh, when I started this little business that I would have to deal with the culture, but it's something that uh, you have to respect when you're moving to a different country. You're gonna be dealing with different cultures. Uh, you may not agree with it, but it's, uh, I think, working within the framework of what I had to do and creating contracts for these women to work in their home. In the end, it worked out best for everybody. Uh, everybody was really happy working at home. Some of these women had to walk through a jungle, you know, uh, and sometimes, you know, it wasn't a safe condition for them. So they were at home, they were raising their families, their children were growing up watching their mothers work and make their own money. Um, you know, everybody was content. The business did very well. And even if you're living in the United States, for example, or Canada, uh, those are big countries. There's different country, cultures within those countries. You know, the Deep South in the U.S. has a very different culture from California, from the Midwest, from the Northwest, from the Northeast. You know, even if you transport your ideas or your business to a different part of the country, you might have to deal with different customs and the way people live their lives and the way they they want to work and uh, I always think that it's it's a good way to um, I always think it's a good thing to understand uh, so anyway that was my story about the hand-painted dresses um, I did post on Facebook um, uh, I think it was a few months ago how many people still have a Laurel's Originals hand-painted dress now those who have my dresses that live in the States they just pull them out every summer and uh, some of these people, they have my dresses like 30 years later. And of course here in Costa Rica, they're a little bit more worn because we would just live in them full time. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm, I'm getting some demand and who knows, I might, you know, pull out some material and, and uh, come up with some new designs and, and uh, make up some new, uh, cotton knit dresses, hand painted cotton knit dresses. But meanwhile, I'm really passionate about the canvas floor cloths. So um, if you want to learn more about the floor cloths, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's lots of videos about uh, question and answer and uh, videos of different designs and how we've worked on different projects. Uh, check out our Facebook page, uh, like my page, and there's lots of posts about different art that's coming out. And sign up for my newsletter. comes out about once, maybe twice a month. And um, you can see all the new projects that we're doing. You can be up for raffles, um, uh, for deep discounts, free shipping. Sometimes I get it into my head to give something away and uh, you might get a set of coasters or placemats. So I really appreciate all the love and support from my readers. And so I just would encourage you to, um, to sign up for my newsletter. So that's my story. And um, I have plenty more about life in the jungle and life in Costa Rica and, um, and, and all the beautiful things that we make here at Laurel's Originals. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.